Yo, what is up, boys and girls? Welcome to another one of the match analysis that we like to do on the channel. This time around, it is Echo versus Onyx PH. So a lot of you guys have been requesting this match in particular because it went all the way to three games. It's cra kind of crazy uh, because Echo, from the matches I've watched so far, haven't been taken to a full game series just yet. So even since F4, I believe, uh, in official tournaments, right? 4 0 in Blacklist in the Grand Finals and then uh, moving on undefeated still. Let's see. Let's see what happens here, right? I don't know if uh, Onyx PH wins in Game 1, Game 2. I know the result. I know Echo wins 2-1, but I don't know what happens in the game as usual. I don't really... I watched some clips, but this time I didn't watch any clips because there weren't any crazy clips, I believe. Last time, I remember I watched the Benedetta split push clip before I did the match analysis because it was clipped everywhere on TikTok. But this game, um, going into it blind. So let's just get into it. All right. We're going to start with the drafts as usual. I think this is just the standard again, guys. Um, second phase, second pick, you always go for these bands. Like, it's always the same candidates. It's always Wan Wan. It's always Joy. Joy and Wan Wan. These two heroes are always banned first. And then there's one respect band, right? This respect band is obviously to, towards Yaoi. But I think the setup here is good from um, Echo. I would think that they would go for the glue pick here because they banned out the Faramis, but I guess they just really don't like the AoE um, AoE's cult altar, right? The Kaja, Faramis, we usually see this. This is a new one for me. I've never seen this in the first phase for uh, Indonesian teams, but I can understand now that they pick up the Kadita and they're probably going to go for something massive too, like a big CC, either a Lolita, an Atlas maybe. Uh, but not in the first phase, I believe, yeah. They pick up the Fredrin, which is a good choice here, and then they pick up the Kadira, another good choice. Now, the Yu Zong in the first phase, not a big fan of that. I think it's okay in this particular situation because the enemy team has picked up the Lapu, so they're, they're already going with an okay matchup in lane already. Um, the Akai gets, to, gets picked here. All right. This is a hero that's also like rising in popularity again in MPL Indonesia. I think in MPL PH it's been very prio in this season especially. Just because of how um, good he takes neutral objectives. <coughs> my bad dude, my bad dudes. But yeah, with the Akai pick here, it's a pretty good flex pick because we have seen Yaoi as well uh, flex it to the roam. Not too sure if Onik Prodigy can pull that off, but... It is a possibility. There's still a possibility. Now for Echo, why I don't like the Yu Zong is because the Fredrin pick here is usually used as a flex pick. I think in Echo's scenario, they, they've never done this. They've never flexed the Fredrin in the season. I know they've done it before. Uh, yeah, good Atlas ban, knowing that Diggy has been banned out, as I said before. Uh, this though, Fredrin. Yeah, the Fredrin pick, usually it's flexed towards XP and jungle. And when you already get the Fredrin pick, usually you do not want to pick an XP laner here. But picking the Yu Zong basically means that they want to set up a counter or a winning lane for Benny QT, which is also a very good choice to go for, right? I think that's why Echo has been, has been really good. They can play through all their lanes. So if they pick up these two heroes first here, they can always just play for Benny and Yaoi later on. And who's to say that this Kadita won't be on Yaoi, right? Uh, it could be Yaoi on Kadita. Claude Ban. Interesting. Huh. Okay, so if they go for the Claude ban here, maybe they're like trying to take like, um, you know, scaling marksmen's away from Onik. I think another good choice would be Moskov or or Carry, right? It's either Moskov or Carry. I think with this composition, you're a bit more. I think you're you want to go up against a Carry more than a Moskov, but they go for an Natalia ban, which is interesting. This one. Kufra, Atlas, full respect towards Yaoi. Three Roamer bands. No, they can first pick. I think at this point, they should just last pick their Marksman and go for something... Um, go for their Roamer first. Because, um, again, they can deny another pick from Yaoi. And they can get a counter pick for, um, for the Marksman. For the gold lane. Physical, physical, though. With two physical damage heroes, I think they might go for like a mag magical gold laner, maybe, maybe like a Harith here. 
But yeah, they pick up the Ruby again, another hero. They're trying to, yeah, it's a roamer. They really want to set up this uh, gold lane winning matchup for themselves because they already know they have a very strong, um, you know, they have a strong mid control duo. If Echo want to really like fight this mid control, they can go for something like a. F I would say like the safest choice would be Lilia, right? They can go for something like a Farsa here too. Farsa definitely works, but it's a bit harder to pull off because of the dive and also the CC present here in this composition. I think if it's not the Lilia, they can go for like a Lunox. Technically, Yiv is this, Yiv and Lilia, two safest picks, I think. Two of the safest picks. Uh, they go for Melissa, which is a good pick here. They've already banned the Claude. Uh, against the Moscow, you do well. Against the carry, you smash carry. Brody is probably the... It's it's an... Wow! Okay, I did not expect the Julian. Really did not expect the Julian. They went for the duo. JJK duo, dude. Skins equals to wins. Okay, so it is Kadida. Uh, it is Kadida. Yaoi. Yes, two of the JJK skins. And then it's a winning gold lane against the Melissa. Man, it's tough. I don't think there's any winning gold laners. Like, I think if he goes for mage, he can win. He has the Lapu. I don't think Lapu is enough physical damage, though. I think he might just go for a marksman here. Nets. It's Nets. Nets is a marksman player. Brody. I, I just go for Brody, honestly. I don't know. Uh, if you go carry or... Brody or Moskov, I think, to... I think carry can work but it's again gonna have a very hard time in lane there's so much dive too oh they go for the carry man i don't i don't like the carry pick here again bullied in lane and up against this comp carry is very short range the reason i i was like thinking brody is because he he's kind of independent in lane right a very good solo laner uh, the ph uh, ph talents and english talents kind of um they um they kind of uh agree with me i guess with the drafts uh, yeah, I, I'm not really a big fan of the carry. I, I think the carry is not going to get much done here because of just how the drafts work. So let's see. Let's enter the land of dawn. Beautiful skin, by the way. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, yeah, guys. So usually on my stream when I play Melissa, because if you guys know, I'm a Nobara simp and I'm a Melissa player one trick ever since the skin came out. Melissa does pretty well with, does better with Electro Flash. I've been like trying weakness point or weakness finder, sorry, for the la last, what, three streams. I've just been spamming weakness finder and I've been finding success. I haven't lost an Electro Flash Melissa. So yeah, Electro Flash, I think is better actually. <laughs> yeah, never mind guys. <laughs> But yeah, let's talk about the matchups here. Winning lane in the gold lane. This is this is something that Benny... They, they always get this for Benny. I think the Claude ban is really good there because it kind of forces Nets into this kind of pick. It's either Moskov, Brody, or uh, Carry. But looking at the composition, they really need a late game Carry. So it's more of like just Carry or Moskov in that case. They went for Carry. I, uh, I'm, not, mm, I'm not sure if Nets plays the Moskov, but I would actually prefer the Moskov here in this position. You talk about Apu Lane, a bit like a stalemate here for both. Um, both of them are just going to be farming. Technically, if Sanford goes for an all-in pre-level 4, he is going to win, but it's not going to happen. Lapu is way too versatile to get caught in that combo. And in terms of this jungle, this three, trio mid combo, it should definitely be Onyx PH who has more pressure uh, wave control-wise and wave clear-wise. And uh, not wave clear, but wave control-wise in the mid lane and also jungle with Akai. Neutral objectives definitely should go to the hands of Onyx PH unless, unless they can poke Sensui down, which they're doing right now. Oh man, I think Sensui. Nice, still. See, see, even when you're solo, your heavy spin is just too good, man. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Ooh, beautiful fight. I didn't think that would work. Nice, nice play. Yeah, I mean, technically it's good. In all-ins like that, especially in like the long team fights, that's where Julian really shines, right? Good, well played. Absolutely well played. And here, as usual, just Melissa bullying carry. That was good. Uh, again, the setup there was kind of better from Echo. Let's replay that, right? Not by Echo. I mean, the, the setup there is better than from Onyx PH because they've already cleared this. I think here, this was... Um, a weird decision to make from Sensui. That's why I just really don't like that, right? They already have mid control here. It shouldn't be him who actually zones. Uh, it should just be 
them poking around, playing it around here because Sensui gets low and ultimately this could have just given over the turtle to Carl TZ. Luckily, he still has that heavy spin, still able to pop it, but it's a bit more 50-50 than I would like personally on the Akai pick. Like the reason you want to go for the Akai is for 100% guarantee on the um, on the turtle, and because he was poked down, it wasn't 200. It was it was it was it was one it was 50-50. Then Echo with the winning, uh, with more members in their comp, just goes in. Solid. Yeah. And here it's just two teams playing it very passive. This is standard every game. Every game is it's basically like this. Once they go, once the first turtle is taken, there's not much you can do on the map unless you have these crazy winning lanes, which Echo are playing for. That's why they, they're going to our top side. They know that Benny is the winning lane here. Yaoi has rough waves. I think he should be... Ooh, good, good CC chain there. Yaoi gets punished. Nice. Very nice, right? Good rotation from Onyx PH. They know that Echo PH have more pressure in the gold lane because of the winning side. Nice flicker from Kakadot. Carl Tizi gets out. Again, they're just trying their best to just put as much pressure as possible up top because they know Nets can't really, you know, fight this. Yeah, that's why. That's why they play. This is why you guys should play for the, for your winning lanes, guys. Uh, you should always understand which, especially if you're like playing one of the trio mid heroes or trio mid roles, mid um, jungle in Rome. Once you get into the draft or once you wrap up your draft, understand which is your strong side, which is your losing side or your weak side. Because uh, usually you have two winning lanes. In that case, you can gank anywhere. But in most games, especially in high rank games, the drafts won't be as um, you know easy as that where you have all winning lanes, right? It mostly is about you utilizing your winning lane to create a better snowball and to get into that mid-game power spike that you guys want. Uh, here, in this case, Echo have picked Yu Zong to the Lapu. It's just a solid lane, and they saved Melissa for later, right? After batting Claude, basically forcing Onik to pick something like a carry or a Moskov, the two picks that I said, and that's an automatic winning lane. Even it's Mos if it's Moskov, it's still a winning lane for Melissa, but Moskov does have a better time compared to carry here. Wow, they engage onto Carl. Wow, they actually deal so much damage here, but I think they utilize all their abilities too much onto Carl. Yeah, they, they utilize way too much onto Carl, man. And he's still not dead. What? Wow. I mean, this is why the French is so prio, man. It's... What the... F it's so broken. <laughs> Everybody engaged on the Frederick, and still he survived. And again, the carry can't really do much here. There's no way he can, you know, rotate. And that's why Echo have a bit be of a better time setting up for the second turtle. It's because they're already in the winning side of the map, which is the gold lane, right? Just notice this. Um, before they set up here, it's shoved in. Gold lane is shoved in. So they automatically get more pressure around this side of the map, right? Onyx PH, they can't really open towards here because they're scared. And why they're scared is because Echo, they, all they need to do is stay hidden from the map. They're not visible here. And automatically, just now, you saw that they weren't really confident in opening these spaces up because they have a Kandida. Now that, they, that Yaoi has showed himself here earlier, they get into position, uh, right? Good positioning, once again, they open that up. But again, carry going here and benny will have more pressure um into that lane so they just force a 4v4 here carry can't really look for fights early on after the patch after the nerfs towards her in the patch he's way too weak still in the early phase and um they just are able to use their better killing pressure overall to you know control this part of the map but the reason they delayed and they kind of forced on page in the situation into that situation was because of the first setup done by benny Clearing out the waves, just shoving it. It's it's not hard at all. It's not. It, it's just. It's very basic. But you know, again, Echo really understand when to go back to their fundamentals and not make it too creative. Items. Yeah, this is what you always do when you're in a losing lane, right? You go for still like plates, and for Benny, no reason to. No reason to go for still like plates. He's a, he's winning. Gold as well. Jeez, Sanji has a massive lead. Two kills, but damn, I would expect the Valentina to have like a to have a, a, a an even a, even gold around here is because um he should be able to clear waves faster. Damn, Sanji getting gold on the map that I'm not even not even seeing. 
Well, what's great about Melissa is she's a bully that doesn't need to snowball. It's so annoying. Uh, Melissa can just scale in the lane. That's why you're seeing her just constantly shove. Usually, oh, wait, there's a gank here. Yeah, I just got to kill pressure. Ryota can't survive this one. Good. Wait, I wonder how Yaoi got there. Didn't see how Yaoi got there. What did they do to actually set up this lane gank? Just the shove from Yu Zong. All right, just good positioning. Just good rotation by Yaoi. Not really anything too fancy there. But yeah, uh, as I was saying, the reason Melissa is so good as a bully, and I think this is what um, the gold laners in Indonesia have uh, like a problem for the gold laners in Indonesia, especially when it comes to playing the Melissa, is because they really, when they think of bully, they just want to keep on going. They just want to, you know, really bully in lane. They want to go for solo kills, 1v1s. And I think they forget entirely what the Melissa can do. Melissa is a scaling hero. When you get to that late game, I think you might, like, you scale pretty okay. Up, up against the carry, I would say you scale pretty evenly, right? You do so much damage in these team fights late game with all your items. So, on the Melissa, I would even say more, actually. You have more team fight presence than the carry, right? Meanwhile, carry shreds, but it's more single target. He does, She does this, but AoE. She could shred AoE. So, yeah, I think that's something that Echo understands. Benny, especially. He's been a Melissa player for so long. But again, even when they like push in, he doesn't force anything. He doesn't commit onto anything. He knows his team is going to get a trade. And he knows as a, as a Melissa, it's all good to just scale, farm. He, she doesn't need to like force any fights just like a Brody would, right? That's why Brody... Usually you see Brody's just use wave manipulation a bit more. Just constantly like taking the wave slow because he needs to get that snowball. But on Melissa, you can constantly just be shoving, poking. And it doesn't matter as long as you understand where the enemy team is and if you're not gonna if if you stay away from ganks you're good you scale and done you have a little bit of a lead against your enemy gold laner that's all you need on the melissa and that's what they're using even here because of the turret that um onik took earlier benny is in a disadvantage but still it's all good there's no problem here because that's something i've noticed from um I think uh, the only Rizal, Rizal, uh, when he played the Melissa, an alter ego, he was just looking for fights, 1v1s. And I just felt like that's very unnecessary. Because he gets caught a lot in the ganks. And we all know Melissa is an all-in type of hero. Technically, you can poke, but if you want to go for like solo kills, you really need to all-in. And uh, yeah, he just goes all-in, uses, uses his first skill early game, which has a pretty long cooldown. You need to use your second ability reset or... Your second ability to kind of reset your first skill. Wow, good pick. Echo with better rotations overall, but on PH with solid reactions. Like, they're not the proactive team on the map. And here, yeah, you can see the shred, right? You can see the shred. There you go. From Benny. Yes. Yes, Naisu. Exactly. Melissa's broken. Good open by Echo. They're looking for the siege here. One thing that uh, Melissa excels at is also sieges, right? Poke as well. Really good. And again, they don't really force anything. They just go back. This game is... Oh, Nets. Walks into the bush against the Julian. Yeah, both teams are just setting up once again. Look at Benny. Look at Benny here. Setting up a slow push down below. Yeah, and then he shoves it. He shoves it right in time here for the Lord. He, lo he noticed that the Lord spawns. He shoves it. It was a it was a slow push earlier, but he just shoves it, so the two waves crash immediately. It's already a slow push that they, that's built up, so they just shove it to get the slow push going faster. And here as well, you can see mid control being uh, fought for, but because they've already cleared the bottom side and they have a little bit more pressure to play with because it's a slow push, they can control this side of the map. That for therefore it kind of forces Onyx PH to force an engage right here. Now Sensui has no heavy spin. That's all they need. Look at the poke. Free turtle. I mean, free lord. Well played. Well played. Should be a free lord. Yeah. Really good. Again, the positioning. Where, where, they, where they are on the map is amazing. They know it's a free lord. No heavy spin. They know that the members have been poked down. So they don't send unnecessary members down to the lord pit. Again, it's unnecessary. They put them in like places where they would go, right? Like Sanji here, because maybe with you know these two members low, some people might want to look for a trade by rotating up top. So he's there to catch the rotation. Meanwhile, Benny also clearing out mid lane to try to force the rotation or try to force like them to stay around this area and not trade up top. 
And Sanford too, with the black dragon form, just beautiful. Beautiful, uh, utilize, and see? It works out because he can actually, he can actually come from the side, wow. Yeah. Crazy. Well played. Then they push into mid lane. This is what you usually want to do with the first Lord, guys. Never go for like, well, not never, but like in most scenarios, you never want to just push three waves at the same time with the first Lord. You kind of waste a lot of your resources there, right? There's no real reason to go for it because you're not going to be able to crack the base turret, especially in like this kind of situation. You should just let the bottom and top side slow push with the enhanced minions with the Lord buff. Then you can push with two min waves in the mid lane. So tier twos are definitely going to fall with this the way that um, you manipulate in this with this kind of um, strategy. Uh, that's what I've seen from all the pro players here recently, right? Top side slow pushing, bottom lane slow pushing. They get a tier two for free, mid lane tier two as well. You have a higher chance of cracking the base turret open with this kind of strategy because the waves are staggered uh, in the way they crash into the turret. It's staggered, and we all know uh, that the base turret still has that kind of passive where it clears out the entire wave. Uh, so yeah, that's something you need to note down. So they kind of already, they you they basically forced everything, uh, all the base turret passives open. Good rough waves by Yaoi. Again, just, you know, oh, isolating them. Good flicker, forcing, forcing that flicker. Now the 7,000 gold lead, it's... Yeah, I mean, at this point, if the game is this fast and this dominant, I, I'm going to just review two games here. Because I don't think it's worth it to upload just one game that's this dominant. This game... If I knew it was this dominant, I wouldn't actually go for, like, this game. There's not much to analyze here, aside from, like, how they utilize their snowball, which... <laughs> in true Echo fashion, doesn't really matter. If Onyx PH tries to, like, go in on us, we are going to punish. Wow, okay, yeah. Is that where they end? Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, guys. There's not much to analyze here. It's just a stomp. Holy shit. GG. We're going game one and two because... Nah, I'm not, I'm not stopping the video there, man. I'm not... We're, we're gonna go. We're gonna go game two. No, 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 no. That was way too easy, man. What the heck? Like, analyzing-wise. There's nothing, there's nothing deep. Literally. We need to go for next. Oh, Echo still... Wow. So, because they won game one, Onik has to win game two. Wow, Echo gets first pick again. Ah, a change. Okay. I like the change, yeah. Farsa and Yuzong picking up the Yuzong, but now it just gives room for the Lapu, honestly. Or the Glue, right? The... Lapu is a bit better if you want to go up against the Farsa. So they go for the Farsa, but the Glue was already hovered over because of the Faramis ban. That's what the Faramis ban enables. They go for the Valentina pick here, or, yeah, it's, yeah, usually when you see a Farsa, see a Yeev, a Faramis, you go for the Valentina. Brody, securing a winning lane. This is, I like this. I really like the adjustment from Onyx There's no reason for, to go for the Akai here because there are so many heroes left open. Echo needs to ban a whole lot of different heroes here, right? Um, for the jungle, you can always go for the Martis. You can always go for the Akai, right? These two heroes can be banned, and even so, even then, there's still some utility to play for. Uh, Echo are probably going to go that way, right? They notice the Brody, the Yuzong, and the Farsa. Maybe they go for, like, uh, Martis ban here. They go for the Natalia, respecting, respecting Kekadot. Onik are still respecting the Kadita. I think they might respect Atlas, yeah, Atlas again. So, yeah, they don't... I would expect, usually, if you go for the Brody pick here, to ban, like, um... To ban uh, the Marksman's just to get him to a place that he's more comfortable on, right? At this point, up against the Brody, you might want to go for Lunox, but you have two physical damage dealers. I think it, it still works out here for Echo if they if they do go for that route. Because if they go for Carry Claude, very hard against Brody. Same Ruby, so it's still the kind of the same game plan here. You're trying to. Yeah, they're for, trying to force Yaoi on a hero that he's not comfortable with. Three Romer bands. Here another three Romer bands. Kufra. Yeah, you you want to go for Melissa at this point. Yeah. Melissa is just better in this scenario. Against the Brody, there's not much that... Even Moskov has a very hard time against the Brody. No one really does well against Brody except for the Melissa. Melissa can all-in the Brody, can poke the Brody better, can clear the waves. 
okay. I think Brody definitely has a little bit of a lead there. Hmm. I like the drafts adjustments here. One thing that Melissa really struggles with is if someone outranges her and basically bursts her while she is uh, in the back line, right? So the Farsa is a good, good pick. The Brody becomes a good pick too because they kind of know what, what Echo is going for when they uh, last pick for Benny. They always set him up for winning lane. So the Melissa is most likely going to come out. And uh, the Brody is a very self-dependent or very independent, my bad. Very independent gold laner. So... Remember what we said earlier, if Echo wants to play around the winning lane, now they're playing around the Melissa again, Brody can withstand these kind of ganks now. Uh, and they can, basically it gives more room for Onyx Peach to maneuver around the map and play around the map. They're not forced to constantly be reacting to Echo PH's plays around the gold lane, but still, they're kind of forced to do that because it's ultimately still a winning lane for Benny. Uh, Pre-level 4, Brody really gets that power, that kill pressure going at level 4 because of the all-ins he can, you know, go for, but... Pre-level 4 against a Melissa, there's not really much you could do as a Brody. Okay, and you can see here, Sanji not really utilizing his, uh, his ability as much to go. And Echo PH already playing it a bit like um, better now, right? They're not going just for the gold lane. Wow! Ryota actually took flickers. So actually used... Use flickers super early in one of these skirmishes. Wow. Oh, wait, was that a misclick? Yeah, I think it is a misclick. If you saw the map, he just jumped. Yeah, no flicker. Flicker. Not too sure about the flicker you zong. We'll see. Maybe they won this game, so it has to work. Yeah, I mean, with the pressure they already had in the XP lane because Ryota died. Easy turtle, not much to be said there. See, that's how they managed to completely distract Onik. Now, with their, as you mentioned, they have the grab to do damage. Now, what's stopping them is how Echo is rotating and answering back. It was a nice play attempt there from Kekadude, able to get that pull in, but still. Sanji, you know, having that Still, Nets just getting bullied out of his lane, man. Getting outranged. And look at the way that they're playing up against the Brody. It's a very different game because they know that the Brody um, needs to get a snowball going. They're constantly just taking the wave slow. Benny in that last game was just shoving, shoving, shoving right on the Melissa. Here, he's taking the lane slow. It's building up a slow push here and he's constantly going to be able to do that by a little bit more time to rotate around the map. And here... Wow, oh, Carl made a mistake, but it's still a kill for the airstrike. Jungler for Romer, solid for Onyx PH. Yep. See, look at what Echo are doing. Same, they're just freezing the waves. They're not letting this Brody scale. They're not letting this Brody get to that mid-game power spike. Assist God. And look, now that Nets is low, they don't even shove. They just wait here because they know this is going to deny more minions ultimately than shoving it in. The, the turret gold is worth, but it's not worth this much, right? They can completely just deny Nets from XP and gold. And yeah, they're playing this winning lane really well. I'm really curious to see how they actually lost this game. That bottom lane is screwed, basically, for Onyx PH. So they, they try to go for the other side, which is already kind of winning here. Carl TZ. Wow, Sensui. Wow, well played. It is a 4v3, but wow. What? 
See, I told you guys. Oh my god, independent laner. Even he even though he's getting shut down like this. What happened? Wow, well played by Nets. Wow. Well played. Jeez. It's so good for Onik. They get the turtle, they win the fight, 4v3, and even in their winning in their losing lane, Yaoi makes a mistake. Oh man. Nets. This guy is insane, man. I mean, I think uh, the first time I like, really was really impressed by him was um, against Blacklist International last season when he pulled off the backdoor play on the Bruno. Yeah, now that they know they have a, you know, a lead here and Carl is up top, up top, there's no reason to not go for this. Good reaction. Echo were going top. Onik go down, take a turret. Worth it for Onik. That burst, man. Another win here for Onik Philippines so far. Off to a good start. Tier one, though, taken down by Sanford. Kekadude and Super Prince on point with their combo right now. The Ruby and the Farsa together working wonders. And I like how they're not shy with flickering on the call. But here's Yowie. Nice, Inspire for skill. That's why they go for the flicker, huh? More defensive. Ryota definitely with the Petrify wouldn't have been able to get out of that. Now, though, there's a collapse. Good positioning by Benny here. He knows no turret. He just goes there, go away. That's the best play he could have done. But wow, wow. That's the best play they could have done. That was just well played by Onyx PH. A bit over, like, they're overextending a bit because they wanted to go for the turret there. But still, very good response by Onyx PH. Good response. Echo played that really well, too. It's not like they made a mistake um, in terms of how they mechanically maneuvered there. No turret means that, you know what, might as well find a better position over in, you know, that lane itself. Well played by Onyx PH, man. Here is just a reset. They know that they are at a man disadvantage. They have a man disadvantage. Interesting. Sanji. Not respecting that Ruby pick too much. 3v5 again. I don't... I don't... I'm not really sure. Wow. They still go for it. That's crazy. The confidence of this team. And there's no punishment. I mean, there is punishment in the mid lane, but... I really wonder why Onyx Pace didn't go for that. It's a 3v4. It's a 4v5. No, 3v5. The burst damage that Super Prince has now they want to play in the mid game. But the problem is... That's how much they respect Sanford, I guess. Right now, if you're Echo... Wow! What? Kekadu is somehow able to survive that. Now Nets with the Torn Apart memory. They're still on the chase here, but wow. How? Onyx Philippines. That was a flicker blessed by the gods themselves. If I'm Kekadu, I'm looking up to the sky and saying thank you, universe. Interesting game. Oh, on PH. Now looking for the siege in the top lane with the Brody. Good choice. Good course of action. There you go. That's the siege. Now the pressure is equal. Back to equal, right? Echo had a bit of, a, uh, of an advantage there. Let's see the items. And Melissa's already going for the DHS. He went for a golden staff second item this game. Last game, he went for DHS second item. What? Okay, I thought... My bad. I was shocked because here it says killing spree. Okay, it's Electro Flash. I was about to say, I think that's, that might be the reason that you're losing. Killing Spree Melissa. Okay, no, it's it's a bug. It's a visual bug. Okay, I was, sorry. <laughs> I was so confused. I was like, wait, did, Mel did Benny actually go for a Killing Spree? No, he went for Electro Flash. Can they reach Nets? I think they don't need to reach Nets. They can just play it front to back. They have a very solid front to back composition here. Yeah. 
jungler to go down here. I really... Huh, how does Sonic win this? They go in again. Oh, it's a miss. Turn apart memory. Uh-oh. Benny always so smart with the with these uh, maneuvers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nice go away. Holy shit. What the fuck? Wow. Does he... See, I'm not sure. Was that a miss just basically? Was that literally just a miss? Or did Benny actually cancel that? I'm offended. It should have connected, honestly. Huh. I guess the ultimate kind of zoned him away from that. Wow. He did this against uh, Boots. Boots as well charge on the Grok. Well, well played. Well played. Go play. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, Benny's reaction time, bruh. What the heck? Yeah. By the way, just use your go away on Melissa. I see so many players save the go away for so long. Even in the team fight, when it just starts, when you know that someone wants to go behind, before they actually go on you, just pop the go away. It's a pre it's a preventive ability. Like you can't just react. You can't. You. Re it's. It. It's better that way. You also get like a lot of physical defense and magical defense when you pop your go away when it's active. The passive gives you magical defense and physical defense. Then you activate it. It times five that. So again, use it. I swear to God, I am. Every time I see a Melissa, I get kind of triggered. But here, here in this game, Benny, Be Benny's only. I think the only Melissa that I'm like, wow, yeah, he utilizes the Melissa. He's very good at the Melissa. Maybe a bit, maybe um, close, close to Mirko. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> good siege. Again, how the f- Huh? How did Onyx PH win this game? There has to be a blunder somehow, right? Because I feel like- Onyx, how do they, how do they force a team fight? Sure, Melissa gets caught, yes. But how does the Melissa get caught? It has to be from a mistake from Benny. How does Oni PH play this? I am really curious to see how they play this. So many ultimates burn for Yaoi. What? Free turret. Yeah. Yeah, again, it's just Echo utilizing their lead. Usually when there's no neutral objective and there's a team who wins like this in terms of turrets and in terms of map pressure, there's no way for Onyx Page to really open up the map here, right? They have to stick as five. They need to stick together. And even then, it's still going to be invaded. Yeah, they're just going to play it very slowly up until this Lord. Then they can clear again. They can set up again. Here, okay, this can happen here. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Okay, this might be it. This might be the key to coming back. I think this is the key. I think this is where they come back, right? It has to be. This is beautiful position. Uh, conceal, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, well played. That was just fucking beautiful. Holy. Wow. Dudes, okay, bros. Nah, nah. MPOPH is unreal. Holy shit, how the fuck? Yo, run. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, wait, 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 wait. We'll see again what happens. Benny QT. I swear, I've been saying this so many times in my streams too, but this basically proves it. Melissa, how you play the Melissa, you need to be selfish. You need, you need to be the most selfish piece of shit out there. All right, you do. Because you really need to come in at the last second. You are an all-in type of hero when it comes to these team fights. Look at this. 
It's okay. Let everyone die. Let everyone take the damage. And once it's free, second skill, first skill. Getting that attack speed, inspire, and they're all dead. Boom. You become so mobile too because the resets just keep on coming for your first skill. It was well played by Onik. Well played by Echo. Oh my god. Bagyong Benny. Wow. You need to be a selfish marksman. Benny is amazing. Oh my god. With the immortality of Yaoi, that fail safe answer. Well, Kevin did a good job in initiating. Yeah, that was a really good job already, man. I thought that was the that was kind of the beginning of the comeback though. But my god. My god. It's beautiful. Not sure about going in onto Kekidot there, yeah. Defensive back's kind of messy now. Okay. They get into formation properly again. Okay, Chad, I have a question. Is Kekidot the same guy as Rapidut? Is Rapidut and Kekidot the same dude? Holy shit, this guy. I was Rapidut on the Atlas was insane. Now it's Kekidut on the Ruby. Jeez. Uh, is this the same guy? Does it, do we know if this is the same guy? Do I? I'm, I don't, I'm not sure. Is there a name change? Holy fudge. No way. No, 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 no. This has to be one of the best comebacks ever, man. It wasn't because Echo made mistakes. I love it. Okay, we're, let's go. I'm, I'm done. All right. Like the video. If you guys have anything to say, comment down below. I can't, I just want to get into game three. Whoa. Wait, no, no, no. Okay, you know what? Let's analyze. Let's analyze. Let's analyze. Let's analyze. Let's analyze how they did, made this happen. No, it was just a scrap. There was nothing to analyze. It's just a beautiful scrap. It's not a match analysis this time. It's just a reaction. Look. Look at how... Okay. Look how they play it. Okay. This is... I guess we can kind of analyze this, right? How they play it here. Ryota buys so much time. Just constantly go in there and the... Oh, no. It's just... No, 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 no. It's just beautiful by them, man. Nah. Nah. It's just beautiful, bro. Benny was playing the same way. He was playing like all the way in the back, just trying. Oh no, man! Oh my goodness gracious! What an engage, bro! I guess the mistake, if you really want to nitpick, has to be the engage here onto Kekidot of all people. He saw two members here, but he went for Kekidot. I think he should have gone for Yoda at least. He's way too tanky, and this right here. Look at this old flicker, the I'm offended flicker, onto Benny. It catches. No, it's a catch. Benny. Oh, it does. Wow. No, what a fight, man. What a game, man. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Oh, my God. I love these games, man. I swear to God. I, I wouldn't have thought... I didn't think it was possible. I thought with the 4,000 gold lead, with a Melissa, with that comp, all in, all in. Wow, well played, well played, well played. Uh, yeah, like the video, subscribe. Oh my God, just move, 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 move. Okay, see you in the next video. Just click the next video, let's go.